So let's look at the pathways going from the sensory receptor, the cell and neuron um, to the spinal cord and then beyond from there. So just a reminder, you've seen a little bit about the white matter in the spinal cord. You know that there's these columns or tracks where groups of axons travel together to similar locations from similar destinations. So shown here are a few ascending tracks. Um, we will see a couple of these. So um, spinocerebellar tracks, for example, groups of axons that are going to move together to the cerebellum. The green ones here are coming from the cerebellum, I'm um, sorry, from the well, cerebellum or the brain. Um, so corticospinal tract is one that's going to start in the cortex and go down to through the spine and then eventually to the skeletal muscles in that case. So this is um, tracks or columns within the white matter is one of the big places we're going to be seeing this information travel through to get to, oftentimes get to get to the brain. Okay, so I'm going to be using this kind of same layout for um, a couple of the somatosensory pathways today, where we're going from something in the periphery, so like touch, um, to the spinal cord and then to the brain. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the spinothalamic, it's called. So spinothalamic um, is beginning in the periphery. So a sensor receptor cell, let's say it's going to detect some sort of touch. Um, this touch information is going to travel via this unipolar neuron to the spinal cord, where exactly our dorsal horn, then to the thalamus, then to the primary sensory cortex. This is where perception happens. So this information is typically perceived by the body. We are aware of it. The types of touch that are transmitted in this system are via tactile discs. So these are the type of sensory receptor cells. Tactile corpuscles. Lamellar corpuscles, also called Pacinian corpuscles. And bulbous. So quiz yourself on some of the things that means some of the specific stimuli that are carried. Um, for example, low frequency vibrations, um, light touch, stretch, both of these for stretch, and deep pressure and high frequency vibration. That information is carried via how many neurons? One, two, three neurons to get to the primary cortex. Remember the thalamus is that relay station. In some cases you're sleeping, this information might not make it to the primary cortex. The second pathway is the spinocerebellar pathway. So same kind of general outline here. This is typically, let's see, it ends in the cerebellum. So this is not this is not perceived because we're not going to the primary cortex. This information is not going through the thalamus. Thalamus tends to lead to a primary cortex. Instead, we're just going sensory receptor cell, spinal cord, cerebellum. Information for this pathway is going to be some of the same ones. So some sensory receptors travel through both conscious and unconscious systems. 
That's true of these first two. Some of the stretch related to body position that we don't need to know about, but our cerebellum helps us with that. Um, and then we've got muscle spindles, which we are not aware of, and then tendon organs. So a lot of things related to where our body is in space. These are those Golgi tendon or organs, which is what our cerebellum plays a big role in, balance and more, uh, motor coordination. So that's the basics of these. Um, let's look at the, actually the anatomy of them. Same information here, just um, a little bit more complex looking. Right on the right was our spinothalamic conscious pathway going from, um, so these types of information coming in from the periphery. Our red is the first order neuron. I had that marked as a primary in the other slide. Second order neuron is in white. That one's going from the spinal cord up to the thalamus. And then the third order neuron is going from the thalamus up to the primary somatosensory cortex. That's that um, post-central gyrus where somatosensory information is processed. Spinocerebellar, spinocerebellar is for unconscious information. And a little simpler just because just two neurons. Um, so information, a lot of it regarding body position because of um, a lot of stretch receptors, joint and body position. I'm gonna to travel to that dorsal horn of the spinal cord. That's the primary, that's the sensory neuron. And then the white neuron is traveling from the spinal cord to the cerebellum, where we can do a lot about balance and motor control. Okay. When we get to the primary cortex, there's also areas devoted to certain um, regions of the body. So this is a cartoon representation of that. The blue is motor. So the green, that's our pre-central gyrus. I think I might have said post in the previous video. Sensory is the pre-central gyrus. Across here, different regions of the cortex are devoted to different parts of the body. So if you were to stimulate a certain part of the body, if you could measure in the brain, a certain part of the brain would respond. Um, certain parts of the body have more cortex devoted to them because we need to have more sensation in places like, and motor control over places like the hands and lips compared to the calf and back. This is called the sensory homunculus, which means little man, because there's like a little man represented in our cortex.